Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Potvin. I am a faculty member here in the Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering at UBC. I am currently in our undergraduate labs where students spend quite a bit of time doing hands-on experiments to make links with the theory they cover in their classroom. So I've been asked to give you a little bit of a glimpse as to what chemical engineers do and what you can do with a career in chemical engineering. What I have behind me is an example of one of the processes that classic chemical engineers will work on. This is a distillation column. We are leveraging our understanding of how matter behaves to design systems to separate components. In this case, a mixture of two liquids. So as it passes through a distillation column, we are separating two liquids in a mixture to obtain pure products. So of course, when you come and you take the relevant courses, you're gonna learn all about the equations and how to model these systems, but that's really at the core of what chemical engineers do. We design these steps in a process that allows us to go from one step, in this case a mixture of two liquids, into a value added product, in this case our purified products, the two components that were in the original system. We don't only study how matter behaves but also how energy behaves. Knowing how energy behaves allows us to design systems that are more economical but also more sustainable or environmentally friendly. What I have here is what we call a heat exchanger. This is a device that lets us take heat from one part of our process and recycle it to offset other en energy costs in a different part of our process. So we use our knowledge of the behavior of energy to design better systems. Here's an example of chemical engineering in action. What I have here is nitrocellulose. I went to the pharmacy and I bought a bag of regular cotton balls. I then used my knowledge of matter and energy to transform these cotton balls into the nitrocellulose that we see here, which has very different properties from the original cotton. Let's take a look at what happens when I ignite this nitrocellulose. Please don't try this at home. As you can see, the reaction is pretty dramatic. One of the things that chemical engineers do is we model how the universe behaves. This means we come up with a series or systems of equation that allow us to predict the result of any process that is going on. We use this knowledge to design systems that are safe. Safety is the number one priority of all engineers, including chemical engineers, and efficient and economical. This knowledge of how this explosion behaves is why I can take a piece of this nitrocellulose, I can put it in my hand, and I can ignite it. I can do this safely because I know that the combustion is too quick for the heat to transfer to my hand. We apply these same principles to the design of the large scale processes that produce everything that we see around us. Once we do have a good understanding of how energy and matter behave, we can leverage that knowledge to design complex applications based on chemical reactions. So what I have here is a packed column that is used to remove CO2 from a gas stream by chemical reaction with a liquid. One of the biggest challenges that is facing humanity right now is climate change and chemical engineers have a role to play in designing the systems that are going to allow us to mitigate the effects of climate change and solve some of the sustainability challenges that we are facing today. It's not enough to know that a chemical reaction will occur. We have to understand the kinetics of that reaction or how fast it's going to proceed. Some reactions are too slow on their own to be useful in a process. So we have to add what's called a catalyst. A catalyst is a chemical product that speeds up the reaction. Let's take a look at an example. I have here some hydrogen peroxide. This is the same product that you have at home in your medicine cabinet and it's used to disinfect the room when you scrape your knee. What you have at home is typically a 3% solution. What I have here is a 30% solution, which is 10 times as strong. That's why I'm wearing gloves. So the chemical formula for hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. If I just leave it in this graduated cylinder and we wait long enough, the peroxide will degrade on its own into water, H2O, and oxygen, O2. This is a very slow reaction and we'd be here for a very long time. We'll see if we can speed it up. I'm going to add some soap. The soap does not take part in the reaction, but it will make for a nice effect as you'll see in a moment. And I'm going to add the catalyst. 
Remember the catalyst, all the catalyst does, it speeds up the reaction. So let's take a look at what happens when I add this catalyst, which is potassium iodide. So as you can see, the reaction is speeding up. This is the exact same chemical reaction that peroxide is degrading into water and oxygen, but it's happening at a much higher rate. The salt that we added just serves to trap the gas that's coming out and make this nice foam. This reaction is called elephant toothpaste because it kind of looks like what would be left over after you brush an elephant's teeth. You might notice there's steam coming out of this uh, graduated cylinder of the reaction here. This is because this reaction is exothermic. It releases a lot of heat, right? I cannot touch the substance right now. So this is where our knowledge of matter and energy comes in again. We speed up reactions, but we have to understand what the end product is going to be so we can design things that are safe and efficient. So here we have an example of a biological process. I have some of my chemical engineering students growing microalgae that are single-celled organisms that have a biology similar to the biology of plants. Here we're producing them because they produce a lot of oil and we can extract that oil and convert it to biodiesel, a fuel that is more sustainable and less environmentally harmful than conventional fuels. So I know that some of you might still be associating chemical engineering with the oil and gas industry. And that's certainly where it came from and we still have some of our graduates that do work in that industry, but it's so much more than that now. As you saw from those few examples, we have chemical engineers working in all processes and all industries that you can imagine. We have chemical engineers working in healthcare, in food production, pharmaceutical production. We have people doing biological engineering and genetic engineering. The rules of the universe apply to all possible fields, so it's a great discipline to be in. It's exciting, it's cutting edge, lots of stuff going on. As you can see, chemical engineering is one of the most versatile disciplines available. Whatever field, whatever application, whatever process you're interested in, there are chemical engineers involved and there are ways to apply your skills in chemical engineering. The world needs more chemical engineers. So hopefully you found this interesting and maybe you had some of your questions answered. If you do have more questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We're always happy to talk to prospective students. We hope to see you soon. All the best. So we have to add what we call a catalyst, a chemical substance that speeds up the reaction. Where students spend quite a bit of time running experiments and getting hands-on experience to a... Uh, blah, 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 blah.